does disabled mean? Now, when I'm questioning the definition of a word, I consult the dictionary. Well, let's be real. I asked Siri. And Siri consulted the Oxford Dictionary for me, which defines disabled as a person who has limited actions, senses, and movements based on a physical or mental condition. But what's fascinating about the dictionary is it even has its own disclaimer box that pops up and says, sorry, our terms may be outdated. For the disabled can be interpreted as dehumanizing because it puts the disability before the person. Now, I identify as a temporarily able-bodied and neurotypical human. I probably cannot define what disabled means, but I can question it. I imagine that disabled means something different to everybody. I simply want to have a conversation with you all about how to treat people. My questioning of what disabled means started in seventh grade. Now in seventh grade, I was teeny, teeny, tiny. And the only guy who was smaller than me was my friend Jason. Now Jason was gregarious. He had this big smile that would light up a room, but he was really tiny. He had very angular features and a little bit of a stutter. But that did not matter to me. We were friends. You would see Jason bopping around, locker to locker in his wide leg echo jeans. It was 1999, y'all. And he loved magic. So he'd be pulling out his jacks and his dice. So I was so honored when he asked me to be his magic show assistant for the Harry C. Stephan annual talent show. We practiced every day at recess for a month until we found ourselves on stage together. We were about halfway through the, the mind reading magic trick when I looked out to the audience and I noticed a little murmur. A uh, pss, 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 pss. And that, that murmur changed into a laughter. Let me tell you, when you are 13 years old and you realize the entire student body is laughing at you, not with you, it is a punch to the gut, but that's okay. Jason just kept on going with the dice and we made it through the show. And backstage, he gave me a big hug. But I was so confused. That was until a teacher came up to me and said, young lady, next time you pull a stunt like that, we're gonna have a little chat. And I did not know what was going on. That was until it dawned on me that the entire student body, including that teacher, thought I was up there making fun of my friend Jason. You see, they couldn't see us for what we were. They saw us up there on stage as able-bodied young teens and cognitively disabled young teen. When what we were was a cohesive magic duo, working together as friends, as equals, just having fun. This closed-mindedness absolutely broke my heart. 
You see, there are many ways to look at this world. For too long, we have been evaluating people with special needs and disabilities and trying to help them change into the world. And maybe it's time for us all to figure out how we can change the world together for them. So what started out in seventh grade as questioning what being labeled a certain way means has evolved today into a career. As development director of one of the leading adaptive outdoor recreation organizations in the country, the BOEC, as we like to call it, I am tasked with evaluating what being disabled means on a daily basis. You see, there are different ways of looking at this. We have the academic model, which shows us a social way of looking at things, or a medical way of looking at things. The medical model of being disabled evaluates being disabled as a health condition. The social model, how, model however, makes us look at disabled as a social concept judged by humans. So at the BOEC in 1976, our founders simply wanted to bring people together, to integrate people who have a different level, a spectrum of cognitive and mental impairments so that anyone, no matter what, could get outside and recreate and have fun. They envisioned a world of wholly inclusive communities where we could all see each other person to person, soul to soul. Now, I take this experience of being in seventh grade with Jason and just try to think of how we can all work together. Too often, it is one's own attitude, people's perceptions, the physical environment, and the social stigma of what disabled means that actually disables an individual. Ellie Greenall is an almost 14-year-old skier chick with an attitude. She is paving the way for young girls diagnosed with Rett syndrome. Rett syndrome is an extremely severe genetic neurological disorder that affects mostly young girls. These young ladies are trapped in their bodies and have severely limited movements. However, their minds are cognitively present, aware, and alert. Ellie came to learn how to ski with us in 2021. And she is defying medical odds because she can stand she can use her hands, and since she is nonverbal, she has figured out a communication method with her family through blinking her eyes. Later that day, without ignoring her disorder, but instead adapting to it, with the help of her instructors and her dad and her brother by her side, Ellie was able to stand up and ski down peak nine in Breckenridge. <laughs> Ellie's dad, Rob, even shared with me that that day her eyes were beaming with joy and even blinking, shouting faster. 
faster. And we are so excited to see Ellie and her family back for another full season of skiing. But this is what I'm talking about. It was Ellie's attitude, her ability to tell herself, I can do this. It was the perceptions of others that were broken down, helping challenge her, but letting her do it in her own way. It was the physical environment that we changed, allowing for tethering and back-ended entry boots, and sometimes a sit-ski or a mono-ski. And with that, maybe the social stigma of being disabled goes away. I envision a world where we can all work together regardless of the physical or mental spectrum of impairment we are all on, that we can work together to see each other for exactly where we are at. When I was 13 years old, Jason taught me some magic. And even though his, his magic tricks were really cool, that wasn't quite it. He taught me that no matter what, to see a person for who they are at, soul to soul, is the magic. Perhaps the greatest disability we all have is our inability to see beyond someone else's. So do this. Everybody take two fingers, put them up in the air, and just put them on your pulse. Feel that. Look around you. Every single person in this room has a heartbeat, has a soul that defines who you are. And that soul is not disabled. Thank you.